Yeah, so the summary of how they drive is, and here's the other thing. So this has autopilot. So I just clicked in. On this road, it will steer the vehicle. Look at this. It's steering the vehicle. This is free with all Teslas. And it's not gonna do that in the VW. All right, so we're road tripping today. We're taking this 2024 Volkswagen Jetta SEL. I'm currently in its dynamic cruise control and lane keep assist, and we are comparing it to that, I know. We're comparing it to that Model 3 right there. So that's a standard range Model 3 versus this. And what I can't believe about this is even after destination, this is a sub $30,000 car. So there's a huge value here. And today we're going to test uh, what it costs per mile to drive this, which gets 30 miles per gallon in the city and 40 miles per gallon on the highway to a fully electric and highly efficient brand new 2024 Tesla Model 3. We're doing the same route. We're going the same speed, running our air conditioned and just going along with traffic. I'm gonna show you different features of the car, what VW does better, what Tesla does, does better, and see if it's worth paying the premium to go with the Tesla Model 3. Initial impressions of this, the seats are really comfortable. It has both heated and cooled seats, heated steering wheel, Apple CarPlay is running. So overall, really nice. Even the motion of like the turn signal here, the stocks, which Teslas don't make shift stocks anymore. They're done with it. They said that's the past. But VW says we're gonna make those shift stocks feel so good. We got a lot of shift stocks. I love the stocks. I looked at Germany. I said, what a country. <laughs> They're eating the cats. Uh, they. So anyways, these seats, two-tone seats, uh, just gore. They're really comfortable and the suspension on this is really soft and cozy. The Model 3 suspension is good. It's very good, but it's a sportier feel. So those are the initial impressions. Overall, I've always felt VW is a good value. You get in and you go, wow, this is really nice. And it's just like a, a kind of a cheapened Audi, I would say. They just kind of took some of the bells and whistles and screens that Audi has and just kind of simplified it. And I've actually always really liked that about VW. So the journey begins and we'll keep you posted. All right, so we're pausing listening to Intentions by Bieber. 435 mile range on this thing. The Tesla gets about 272, and realistically, you're not going to get that. You might get 250 out of it. 435 miles, so really impressive range. You'll be able to go a lot further faster in the VW. But again, most of us are just doing city driving, so the actual range of the vehicle won't matter or it will rarely matter but just wanted to point that out now that we're about halfway through the trip wanted to take a look at the proportions of both of these vehicles this was very comfortable on the way up but it has nowhere near the performance of the tesla model 3 this doing zero to 60 in about 5.8 seconds very nimble handling that comes with 18 inch wheels as the smallest this has 17 inch wheels as the smallest and you can get bigger rim sizes on both of these. The efficiency was really good, the comfort is good, but I'm actually shocked that the value that they bring on the interior. Now, the infotainment system isn't as in depth as what Tesla offers, there's no doubt about that, but this volcano brown and black interior, I don't know why they gave called it volcano brown, I think volcano black with brown would might have been better, but. When you get in a car like this and it has these two-tone seats and the accent door cards, it immediately brings the interior up a little bit. Anyone getting into this car will go, wow, this is nice, just because of that color change as opposed to it being all black. So I like that feature. Steering wheel's comfortable. This is crazy to say this. I love cars with manual transmissions. It's very engaged. It's the most engaging way to drive a vehicle. I owned a 2018 BMW M2 manual transmission. It was amazing. It's probably, that was my favorite car I've ever owned. It's weird that this has a shifter in it. A lot of VWs have gone to just that little knob. Porsche has done the same thing. So it's interesting. You get in, you're like, what the heck is this? So that's kind of funny. Like I said, it has Apple CarPlay. The seat comfort is great. So let's see, go from this, we'll jump in the Model 3. So into the Model 3 we go. They both have heated and cooled seats. And you have to think to yourself, the Model 3 starts at $38,800. That's $28,800 for the SEL trim. So it's crazy to think, normally you're saying, oh, what a value the Tesla is, but what a value the VW is. So seat comfort, these seats are slightly more firm, maybe a bit of a sportier feel. 
but still very comfortable. And then obviously with the Tesla, you have this huge infotainment system. And the other thing I forget to mention in a lot of reviews is these cameras on the Tesla. So there's a camera here, there's cameras here, they're on the rear, they're on the front, and these can be used for full self-driving. They can also be used as a security system. So the owner of this vehicle, Andrew, he can remotely monitor his vehicle if something happens, if he gets in an accident, all of this stuff, if you want crash data, Tesla can give you all of that and you have access to it right on a USB port. Whether your car is across the country uh, and on a trailer being towed, you can check in. You can even look at the interior of the vehicle remotely. If you have it in dog mode, you can remotely, if you're in Costco, right? If you're in Costco buying 400 pounds of chocolate and 75 eggs, you can see if your dog is doing well in the car. You can see what the temperature is and you can see the cabin camera, what they're doing. That's a huge value that I forget to mention a lot of times. This also has software updates where this might have some bug fix software updates, but it's gonna be nothing major. There's not gonna be any new features added to the car. This is just what you get. Now, that's my comfortable seating position in the Jetta. So let's see what the back seat is like. Back seat, again, has these really nice bolsters. Excellent uh, comfort back here, but very plain and simple. And not that that's a bad thing, it's comfortable. And you also have this big tunnel right here for the drivetrain, which takes up a ton of space. It does have heated seats in the back. And it's interesting, there is no pocket on the driver's side, but there is a pocket on the passenger side, and then you have your center armrest. So you can seat five in here. So now in the back of the Tesla, you can see it gives you the time here. It says Jerome is 32 minutes away, and it gives you a, your arrival time as well as your exterior temperature. So you have this whole infotainment for the back seat, and then you can hit power here, and you can aim your air exactly where you want it to be aimed. You can then go into here. If you wanna watch YouTube right now, you click into YouTube and you can watch YouTube videos, swipe down. And you can watch Tesla tutorials of various features of the car and how to use them. It's crazy to have this in the back seat of a car that starts at $38,000 and, and we'll go through updates in the future. So yeah, I just think that that is a really nice value. Pockets on both sides and the floor is totally flat. So if you have someone sitting in the middle, they actually have space for their feet. I'm six feet tall, so a little bit limited on headroom in terms because there's a sunshade here. By the way, the best sunshade, I will have it linked below for the new Model 3 Highlands from Vion. I will have them linked below. They're stocked up, ready to ship, 10% off and free shipping from Vion.parts. So that, that is really good. Another popular accessory that everyone gets is the carbon fiber spoiler from T-Parts. So that's what this is from. Again, that will be linked in the description. The other thing we need to look at is trunk space. Normally I say, yeah, the Model 3 massive trunk space. It has a ton of trunk space and it has the sub compartment in the trunk. But the, this Jetta has an insane trunk. It's not power lift, so it's manual up and down. But the trunk in here is ridiculous. I mean, it's massive. It also has a partial spare, which Tesla does not have or offer. So that is a really nice feature that people like. But Huge space, you could easily fit two golf, two, three, four, 50 sets of golf clubs in the back of here. The seats are 60, 40 split. You can fold those down flat. So again, the value of the Jetta is, is kind of blowing my mind in a way. It's kind of a forgotten car in a lot of ways. So seat comfort, good in the back. I think it's about equal, whether you're sitting in the Model 3 or you're sitting in the Jetta, it's about equal. The seats in the Jetta are a little bit softer Suspension overall is a little bit more comfortable, but Tesla has a big advantage in terms of technology. Again, the security system, full self-driving capability, all that. So this Jetta does have IQ Drive, which is advanced driver assistance technologies. And that means travel assist, which is a semi-automated driving assistance, adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, emergency assist, front assist, pedestrian monitoring, all that normal stuff that just about every car has now, but this is uh, a slight step ahead of average. So now that we've covered both of these vehicles, it's time for me to jump into the Model 3 and drive that after just getting out of the Jetta. We'll continue our trip, and at the end of this video, I'll show you the breakdown of the cost per mile, as well as which cabin has the quieter interior going 70 miles per hour. We will test and show both of those at the end. So let's jump in the Model 3 and see how it feels. All right, so in the Tesla, no shift stocks. You just swipe up on the screen and you're good to drive.
you can tell pretty quick. When I start to drive, I've driven a ton of cars now, and even at five, 10 miles per hour, you can tell a huge difference car to car. This immediately feels more tied down. Again, no shift stocks. The turn signal is on the wheel, which I'm still getting used to. It is way sportier. And this isn't supposed to be the sporty model. I mean, the handling on these things is so precise. It's quiet in here. I'm curious to see which one is quieter because the VW, the Jetta is also quiet. But yeah, just really fine tuned steering and feel and feedback on roads like this. Actually very fun to drive. Whereas the Jetta, I don't think you would be doing this kind of driving. It wouldn't be enjoyable. You'd be ringing the engine out, wouldn't be making a pleasant sound, but the uh, batteries in this that make no sound. You think you'd hear the little Energizer bunny just da -da 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 -da. but you can't hear him. So yeah, very shocking difference driving between the two of these. This just being far more planted and that's because of how they're built. They have the batteries on the bottom of them. So they're very safe. You virtually impossible to roll this. In, in my opinion, this is a far more engaging car to drive despite how automated it is. The feel is very good and the balance is, I, so I would say you would have more fun, whoa, big pothole, driving the Model 3. Jeez, this is good. Andrew and I drove all the way up here and I'm the one enjoying the best roads. Life's unfair, folks. But how we, you know how we can help Andrew? If you're looking to buy a Model 3, I've already maxed out my referrals for the year. If you're looking to buy a Model 3, I will have his referral code down below in the description. You get $1,000 off of your car and Andrew gets 500 in credit to use towards service or a new vehicle or parts or whatever. So you should absolutely be using a referral code. I will have Andrew's linked in the description. So the big differences right now are on a road trip, you know, you're gonna go further faster in the VW. You don't have to bother with charging. Tesla's charging network is excellent. I've never had any issues. I've been to over 400 superchargers. I've driven across the country multiple times. I've never had an issue. I've had to wait for 10 minutes twice before charging, that's it. But you go, you don't go nearly as fast. I just did a 2000 mile road trip in my Rivian. I spent six and a half hours just sitting there charging. That doesn't include the time to you know exit the highway, go to the charger, all that stuff. So it's just up to you. But on a daily basis, this is going to be cheaper to run. I think we'll see how much cheaper it is with home charging in comparison to filling up on gas. So I think that that's why this will be a useful video. But yeah, so the summary of how they drive is, and here's the other thing. So this has autopilot. So I just clicked in. On this road, it will steer the vehicle. Look at this. It's steering the vehicle. This is free with all Teslas. And it's not gonna do that in the VW. Now, this is an extreme case because the road is crazy, but it will do it. And it will have full self-driving where you type in your destination and it takes you there. 95, you know, very little intervention from the operator of the vehicle and it will take you there. So you just click this again and you're back out of it. But just some nice technology that's built into the Tesla and that's part of the premium that you're paying for. Also, there are federal tax incentives to buy these because I don't talk about that a lot because eventually they're going to go away and they change often. So if you're watching this video in a year, it might be different than it is now. So currently it's an upfront incentive, $7,500 credit if you make under $150,000 a year, or if you own a business, you, you can get it under your LLC and there's no uh, limit to the income there. So you could buy as many as you want and you're getting the $7,500 incentive as long as the vehicle itself qualifies. So just look that up on your own or talk to a Tesla rep and they can help you. But even so, uh, the value of the VW is, is really good and that's before you walk into the dealership at the end of the month and say, look, I'm buying a car either here or there. You tell me if you wanna do business, you know? All right, we are currently climbing the mountain. We are at 6,000 feet elevation. This does have drive modes. It has four separate drive modes. Equal, equal, normal, sport, and custom. So we're gonna go into sport mode because we're on some nice back roads. Sport mode, the shift points become more aggressive. Looks like it's an eight-speed transmission. I think it tight, yeah, definitely tightens up the steering a little bit. Nice body roll in the car. No one has ever said that. Nice body roll in the car. But so far we're showing 35 miles per gallon. That's what the car says. I will fill it up with gas at the end of the video and give us like an actual reading and compare it to what the car says. I always find the car readings 
to be a little, um, they give it like two more miles per gallon and that's like across any car. I've never seen one be like dead on. And uh, VW has a track record of maybe not, um, you know, being the most accurate with uh, fuel consumption. But, but we could forgive, right? We can forgive, you just can't forget, that's all. We can be better moving forward. The Model 3, the lights on the Model 3 really do look great. The redesign they've done on that is excellent. Also, the gauges in sport mode turn red here, so you can see blood, so you can see so you wanna drive. You wanna drive hard as we climb up Mount Mingus into Jerome. But overall, the car has been, it's comfortable. It's, I'm shocked at how cheap it is. I feel like, you know, if you compare this to a Honda Civic or something, I don't know, I feel like you may have to look, th this is a little bit more of a luxurious feel. The Honda has just cheaper materials throughout the cabin. The Civic has changed a lot, but it, it is just a, yeah, really, I feel like it is a good value and the efficiency seems to be holding up. I'd say the sound system is good. There's like, if you got like a base Toyota, you know, that would be a bad sound system. This is just in the good range. Then there's Tesla's sound system, which were up here. And then there's like a Bang & Olufsen system, which would be way up here. Now this says, it might. I think it's a Beats sound system. Uh, I will verify that. But overall, it's just a, it's a solid car. I don't think it's overpriced, underpriced. I, I, I think it's a good value. The 1.5 liter turbo is kind of weak at times, but you know, you're getting a ton of efficiency out of it and a lot of people really don't care. The big difference is in the Model 3 for this comparison, the performance is there. It's so immediate at any speed that you're going. That's that's a really big difference. You don't have to wait for the car to downshift or anything like that. So, uh, but overall, good experience so far. So the car is saying 270 miles of range since last fill up. And then over here, you can see we're still over a half tank of gas. You can get more than 500 miles of real world range out of this. Says 37.5 miles per gallon. We are gonna check that now. We're gonna fill this up here and um, see what we actually get. Then I'm gonna meet Andrew at the supercharger to see where he's at and then compare the cost per mile. The results are in. We just completed the trip. Before we get to that though, today's video sponsor, IntoTheAM.com. This is one of their basic tees. Andrew's wearing their basic tees. I even have their athletic shorts on, which I really love. So if you go to IntoTheAM.com and use code Jeebs, you will save 10% on your entire order. And that's stackable with anything else that they have going on. Um, I think if you get a three pack of these, it's around $16 and they have sales. But the, the basic tees, uh, the shirts, I even did a Cybertruck specific shirt with them, a design that I co-designed with them. So I've had a great partnership with them over the years. These shirts fit really well, they're comfortable. Your wife may look at you differently. Your husband may look at you differently. You may attract attention from a mate. Can't guarantee it, but you might. Into the AM.com, code Jeebs, 10% off. Into the AMs, thank you for sponsoring this video. Now into the results. So this Jetta was driven 271.1 miles and it used 7.438 gallons of gas. Gas cost me $3.47.9 per gallon. How about how gas prices are 347.9? Like what, what else is priced like that in the world? So I spent $25.88 on gas. I got 36.4 miles per gallon on gas. The car was saying 37.5, so very close. So that breaks down to 9.5 cents per mile on the trip that we just did. Now keep in mind, we went from about 1,200 feet in the Phoenix Valley all the way up to 7,000 feet on Mingus Mountain and then down and back around. So 9.5 cents per mile. So now the Model 3, 257 miles. And the reason there's a mileage difference between the two cars is because this is a press car from VW. So they always bring them to me washed and fueled. So they drove 18 miles to my house after they fueled it. So the breakdown is still the same, but that's why there's a difference in miles. So 257 miles, 204 watt hours per mile, extremely efficient and charging at home costs 14 cents per kilowatt hour and 55.3 kilowatt hours were used today, which breaks down to, and all you have to do is take 55.3, multiply that by 0.14, and that gets $7.74 is what this round trip costs from home charging. So that's three cents per mile, which is 66% savings over 
putting gas in this because your gas station, what a lot of people forget is your gas station is at home. And that's a huge savings, especially this is a small trip. So, you know, you're saving what, $14. But if you expand this doing tens of thousands of miles per year, that's where the, the savings really start to add up. Now, let's say we did public charging. So public charging where we just charged up here costs 37 cents per kilowatt hour. If we were to do that and charge it and we've used 55.3 kilowatt hours, that breaks down to $20.46. So public charging still cheaper than fueling up with gas at $3.47 per gallon. So eight cents per mile on public charging, three cents per mile home charging. So if you're doing your daily routine, your daily route, and if you're not going further than 271 miles, then you're gonna save a ton of money by driving the Model 3. But the one thing we haven't done yet is test the sound. So let's see which one is quieter between the Jetta and this Model 3. So now to test out the Jetta sound test, 55 to 56 decibels is what we were seeing in the Model 3 Highland. I'm not sure, I feel like this will be a little bit louder. It feels a little boomy in here, but science will tell us folks, Bill Nye taught me well. So let's see what the Jetta does. So again, air conditioning is off for this test and we will go 70 miles per hour and it's on the same section of road we always test it on. So it's about a decibel higher, nothing crazy. It's not really noticeable and really you can't even hear the engine. It's just a matter of what they've done. The sound deadening in here is not quite as good as the Model 3. But yeah, it's crazy that Teslas are now becoming really quiet vehicles. The build quality has just gotten, the build quality on the new Model 3 is just so much better. So it's, you know, it could be within range of error, but uh, one decibel is about what I'm noticing there being a little bit higher. Now, if you wanna see how VW's electric SUV stacks up to the Tesla Model Y, click this video right here. It got over 200,000 views and people seemed to like it. Maybe you will too. <laughs>